It's Adam here for PC Monitors and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the BenQ EW277 HDR. The OSD is controlled by pressable buttons on the underside of the bottom bezel. There's also a power indicator which is green when the monitor's on and when the monitor loses signal to the computer and it enters a low power state that will go amber. There's also a dedicated button here um, which has an HDR and Brightness Intelligence Plus logo and that does control those two features and I'll come on to that very shortly. If you press one of the main buttons on the OSD system it comes up with a quick menu and that will show you the functions currently assigned to the buttons when you press them. The second and third button actually are custom keys so you can customize them in the OSD. The first button always controls the low blue light setting so you can activate a low blue light setting very quickly. There's multimedia which is the weakest, web surfing which is a bit stronger, office which is a bit stronger again, and there's reading which is the strongest low blue light setting offered on the monitor. The second one the foot which is the first custom key I've got that set to picture mode I think it might be picture mode by default anyway there's various presets on the monitor which are explored in the review standard HDR low blue light game photo sRGB rec 709 eco mbook and user so the user offers you the greatest flexibility as you can control the red green and blue color channels the HDR mode is also important because the monitor actually switches to that automatically um, when it's detecting HDR content and you've got everything else set up so you're using the proper HDR pipeline. Um, but if you've just got the monitor running SDR content as I've got at the moment and you enable the HDR mode, it's actually an HDR emulation mode. And as I mentioned in the review, that's complete rubbish. I wouldn't bother using that um, HDR mode for SDR content. Um, it will automatically kick into the proper HDR mode if you're actually using HDR content. The game mode, I don't really say much about this in the review because I don't really like it. It doesn't bring any advantages to the table. It just upsets colour balance, makes everything look far too cool, causes a bit of oversaturation, messes up the gamma a bit. It's just not very useful. Um, the sRGB and the Rec. 709 settings are actually quite useful because they are emulation modes, they reduce the colour gamut of the monitor and again I explore that in the review. The third button along, which is a custom key, uh, by default I believe it controls the input source used by the monitor but I've got it set to brightness because I like to adjust my brightness quickly. So you can set that to whatever you like and I'll come on to that shortly. The fourth one, the main menu, and the fifth button is exit. There's actually a little shiny copper coloured logo, it's not very obvious in this lighting um, but the HDR logo there and it has a BI plus, Brightness Intelligence plus logo so you can quickly activate and deactivate these two settings using that. So you can have one active or the other active depending on the preset you've uh, actually got selected because you can't use Brightness Intelligence Plus in all presets, as I'll come on to shortly. But the main menu system, Eye Care, is the first section. You can see that BI Plus, Brightness Intelligence Plus, is greyed out. Um, that's because I'm currently in the user preset, and that allows you to customise the colour channels. But if you select um, one of the presets which does have BI Plus enabled, for example, Standard, you can then activate that feature. And I explore this feature in the review. Um, I don't find it very useful at all, but what it does is it uses a light sensor on the monitor and it'll adjust the image on the monitor, the brightness, um, and also the color temperature and various other characteristics according to the ambient brightness. I don't agree with the adjustments it makes um, and I don't find the constant adjusting of the screen brightness to be useful at all. Um, there's no flexibility and everyone's sensitivity to brightness varies so it's really trying to do too much at the same time it's not a feature I find useful but you can have it on you can have it off there's a light meter setting and um, which will just give you a little icon on the screen 
to give an indication of the brightness adjusting itself according to the ambient brightness. So if my room became brighter, that bar would fill up a bit and the screen would become brighter. So it's just a visual indication of what the, the brightness on the screen is doing at any given moment. There is also a sensor sensitivity setting. It doesn't really change an awful lot. It just, if you find that the screen is adjusting far too much to slight changes of brightness, you might want to adjust that to, to lower the sensitivity a bit. Or if you find it's your room lighting's changing a lot, but the uh, screen brightness isn't really keeping up, you can increase that. But I really would have found it more useful to be able to set boundaries of the brightness, so your maximum brightness you're comfortable with, the minimum you're comfortable with, um, and just some other sort of flexibilities in terms of colour temperature and that kind of thing, but never mind, they don't have that. So if you have the BI Plus deactivated, um, but it's available in the preset you're using as an option, you can instead select Adjust by Duration, and what that'll mean is the monitor will adjust its brightness and colour temperature and various other things according to how long the monitor's been switched on for, rather than the ambient lighting in the room. Now, in principle, that sounds like it could be useful, because perhaps you could get your monitor giving you a warmer colour temperature, a lower blue light in the evening, and maybe a bit dimmer as well, so that could be useful. But the problem is, the monitor doesn't have a clock, and this is based purely on how long you've had the monitor on for in the last session. It doesn't take into account uh, the time of day or anything like that, so I don't find it practical at all. But it's there if you want to use that option. I'm going to turn this BI Plus thing off before it starts annoying me. Oh, it is off, that's good. Next up there's Picture, and that allows you to adjust basic controls such as brightness, contrast, sharpness. Um, sharpness is in single unit increments between 1, which is the least sharp setting, and 10, which is the sharpest. So you can adjust this according to preferences. I find the 5, the default uh, setting, to be optimal. There are various gamma settings on the monitor, which are explored in the review. Various colour temperature settings. If you're on the user mode, you can also adjust the red, green and blue colour channels separately. There's a hue setting. Uh, some of these are actually greyed out depending on the preset you're using, but in the user mode you can adjust all of this. There's a hue setting, saturation setting, AMA, advanced motion acceleration, which is a pixel overdrive feature on BenQ monitors. You can adjust that. Again, it's explored in the review and high is optimal. And there's an option to reset the color, uh, the picture menu to the factory defaults. Next there's picture advanced. You can adjust the picture mode, so the preset used by the monitor here as well. There's a super resolution feature, and that's another sort of thing which will increase sharpness, um, or um, basically it makes the image overly sharp because it's pretty much optimal by default anyway. But some users may prefer to have this on, especially if they're looking at lower resolution content or they're running the monitor in a non-native resolution. This, this super resolution feature just increases the sharpness. So you can have that at three different levels, with three being the strongest effect. Or zero, which is disabled. Smart Focus. This will have a little sort of box on the screen, um, which it uh, focuses on. So if you're giving a presentation or trying to show someone something, or you want a particular part of the screen to be highlighted, that's what this is for. You can change it between a small and a large box. You can change the horizontal and vertical position as well. And you can slightly adjust the uh, the actual size of the box as well. So there's a little bit of flexibility in terms of the sizing as well. There's dynamic contrast, which is greyed out in some of the presets, including the user mode I'm using at the moment, but that's explored in the review. There's display mode, and that allows you to select full or aspect. If you're running a non-native resolution which isn't in the 16 by 9 aspect ratio, that's where the aspect setting will come into play. So it'll give you black borders if the aspect uh, ratio of the source is different to 16 by 9 and it makes sense for it to have black borders, whereas full will just stretch everything across the entire screen. There's also overscan and that's just an old legacy feature for some old systems, it's not relevant on modern systems at all. Colour format. Um, this is 
again only relevant to certain systems which is why it's greyed out on my system. There's HDMI RGB PC range and that allows you to adjust the colour signal used by the monitor. It, on auto detect which is the default it'll see what the GPU or your system is actually using and it will in theory adjust that to match. Um, it does seem to work properly but uh, if for whatever reason you want to manually change whether it, the monitor is using a limited or full range RGB signal, so the top one being full range and the bottom one being limited range, then you can do that. So some games consoles, for example, for whatever reason you might want to run it in a limited RGB range, but for most games consoles, and uh, modern games consoles and most PC systems, you just want to either run that in full range or keep it on auto. And just make sure your GPU drive is set up correctly, which is detailed in the review. And that was the last setting on that menu. And then there's display. And this allows you to adjust various things if you're using an analog connection, VGA, whereas all of this is all optimized automatically for digital connections such as HDMI, which I'm using at the moment. You can select one of the inputs uh, manually, so HDMI 1, HDMI 2 or D-sub for the source, D-sub being VGA, the analog connection. Um, next there's audio that allows you to adjust the volume, mute um, the integrated speakers or anything connected to the 3.5mm jack or select the source used. Um, I'm not really sure, there only seems to be auto detect or PC audio. I haven't really played around with this, I'm not really sure what the difference is between those two. Um, perhaps PC audio forces you to use the jack um, on the monitor, I'm not sure. The system, and this allows you to adjust various settings of the OSD such as the language, the display timeout period, which I should have increased before the video because it's been disappearing on me a bit, as you might have noticed. So you can increase that to 30 seconds if you like, um, or as low as 5 seconds if you want it to disappear more quickly after the last button press. I'm telling you that doesn't feel like 15 seconds, it feels a lot quicker. <laughs> um, or you can manually exit with the X button at any time, so the last button there. Custom keys, which I mentioned before, so the second and third one along. You can change them to one of these things, so you can have it set to input, super resolution, smart focus, picture mode, brightness, contrast, colour temperature. Brightness is greyed out because I'm currently using it for my other custom key, that's all it is. Um, you can change the colour temperature, display mode, volume or mute. So for example, if you don't change picture modes a lot, but you like to change the um, colour temperature, you can do that. So now I should have one of my quick keys assigned to colour temperature. So you can change it, use a defined reddish, bluish normal. DDC slash CI, which is part of the plug and play functionality of the monitor, and it allows you to use certain software to control the OSD rather than using the little buttons here. Input auto switch, so it will automatically change according to the source. Um, if you've got multiple things connected and you want to specifically select one of the systems, you might want to turn this off. Auto power off, and this allows you to have the monitor automatically turn off um, when it's been on uh, in a low power state for a certain amount of time. So it's still technically on standby because it's drawing a little bit of power but it's as if you've pressed the power button to turn it off or turn it on to standby so there won't be a little power LED or anything. Um, so it's sort of the lowest power state it can be at without actually being turned off at the wall this monitor. There's also Resolution notice, so that just puts a little notice on the screen to tell you you're not running a non-native resolution if you're, sorry, you're running a non-native resolution if you don't have the monitor set to full HD. That's all that is. There's an information section. It shows you the current input you're using, the current resolution and refresh rate, and the optimum resolution or the native resolution and refresh rate of the display, so that's full HD at 60Hz. 
I'm running it at 75 hertz. I go on to detail that in the review. Um, you can overclock this monitor and how much you can do it does vary between systems and I mention all of this in the review. And finally there was an option to reset everything to the factory defaults. That's all there is to the OSD on-screen display menu system of the BenQ EW277HDR. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info. There's a link to that in the description of the video and also information about how you can support the work that we do.